morning. So the question of the day is, when do I start fertilizing? That's what we're gonna talk about. I'll cover that pretty extensively, so here we go. Hey guys, Doc, so before I begin, and I hate to keep repeating myself, but the free lawn care guides cover almost all this. There are specific calendars, there's discussion about this. You go to freelawncareguide.com. That's the website for cool season grass. At the top, there are links to the Bermuda website and the Zoysia website. Use them, they're free. Two million people have used them because we don't want your information. You don't sign up for anything. Just bookmark them so you don't lose them. You can download the calendars. Just use them, they're great. Okay, so we, <laughs> we have had, in the past 48 hours, I guarantee you four or five inches of rain. I'm getting tired of these heavy rain events. I had to fix my septic drain field out here. Thank God I did that because, man, we got hammered with rain. But I want to talk about people. There's a lot of confusion that goes on about when I should fertilize lawns. Matter of fact, I'll tell you about a funny comment. This is perennial rye. You can see it's gorgeous. It's actually actively growing. I've got annual ryegrass, and someone put a comment down below. Said, I can't believe you're putting nitrogen down on cool season grasses this time of year. Stick to your Bermuda. <laughs> Mute. <laughs> Dude, people are just funny and ignorant and dumb sometimes. When do you fertilize a lawn with nitrogen? You fertilize a lawn with nitrogen when it's actively growing. Got it? This is absolutely gorgeous. It's really thick, and I got these test strips from DGL, the new fertilizer. I'll show you that in a minute. But now, I'm, I mean, I just came out here two days ago. I came out here and put some green shocker down on this, finally, because those test strips, I mean, were this tall and dark green, and I have to balance off the rest of the lawn. And now, all of a sudden, two days later, I got a bunch of rain. It's, brilliant. it's just starting to pop with that green shocker I put down. But here's what I want you to understand. You don't want to push a warm season lawn like a Bermuda or Zoysia too early. So about the time that you put down your pre-emergent, and I did a video on pre-emergence, about the time you put down your pre-emergent, the same time I want you to put out a light coat of PGF balance. Now that's especially if you haven't gotten a soil test done. Why do we do that? Our soils have been sitting here for like six months. They haven't had anything done to them. They've been depleted of nutrients. There's a lot of washout going on. They're just kind of bad. So when we put out a, a, a coat of PGF balance, it's an all fast release, really fine particles, specifically designed for lawns. It's a very, very mild amount of nutrients that are gonna go into the soil. And in about three or four weeks, when the lawn really starts to wake up, it's gonna be available for it. Now we're not pushing our lawn. We're not dumping a huge amount of nitrogen down. We're just putting a balanced coat of nutrients. Our lawn wakes up and it wakes up into a soil that has nutrients available to it, got it? So that's why that's part of our jumpstart program that I call it. The jumpstart program is getting a little bit ahead of things, but not pushing our lawn. We don't wanna push our lawns to wake up. But you're gonna to start to see the, the, the urge is when you start to see a few green sprigs come up through that brown grass that you wanna go out and fertilize, just the balance. The other thing, let's talk about scalping. When do you scalp? That's always a question that I get. I personally, scalping can be a major, major pain in the butt and a huge process. So what I say is, is almost do a pre-scalp. What is pre-scalp? I'm just gonna use random numbers. Let's say you left your brown lawn at two inches. So you got two inches of that dead Bermuda on there. What I want you to do about this time of year is I want you to slowly start taking it down. So if it's at two, take it down to one and a half, then take it down to one and slowly start taking it down. And why do I do that? It's because if you go and take, try and take a two inch Bermuda lawn down to whatever you're gonna take it to, man, it's a huge job. And it's just a lot easier to get out there and just start when the soil's dry. You don't wanna do it on wet soil cause you'll leave rut marks, but go ahead and on a dry soil, just start taking it down little by little. Week after week, just cut it. Your neighbors will think you're crazy because you're out there cutting brown grass, but this is a good time to start to take it down. But anyways, while I'm here in the back, look at this. This is that area. This is the area that got hit with that DGL, dark green lawn. You can see it's a stripe here, but man, that is just gorgeous. Annual ryegrass is actively growing right now. For the past two days, we've been up in the 60s and we've had a bunch of rain, but look at this stripe. Is that crazy or what? You can see the stripe that runs down to the dock. That's right, just been hand sprinkling a little bit of this dark green lawn, DGL. Now you can do that with almost any fertilizer, but man, let me tell you what. This, this is crazy. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. This stuff's, that stuff's about 
eight to ten inches tall and the rest of this is probably about four or five it's weak it's yellow it's thin that is just absolutely crazy <laughs> absolutely crazy so i texted john this morning i said bring your mower i'm gonna have him cut everything tomorrow he's gonna cut that backfield he's gonna cut this front um he's gonna cut the backyard and then we have to i think what i've made a decision someone was asking about this field area over in here where we have the cabin i did put out i had some um, annual ryegrass and i seeded it so hopefully that'll come up and grab but then i think i'm going to seed it with bermuda because under this annual ryegrass is a whole lawn of bermuda so i'm just going to carry that over there we're just going to have to clean it up because we got a bunch of sticks and stumps over there i'll probably have to get my toe behind cutter and go over there and cut that so my last video I did these security locks and someone was saying doc this isn't sitting flush that's because I hadn't tightened the screws all the way <laughs> someone made a comment that uh, they can hack in with Wi-Fi no there's it's not internet based um, there's no Wi-Fi and there's no power on this lock it's just a battery and that's it close my door it's locked real good safety tip uh, so I'm gonna start shooting some videos in here with this new series. We use this sort of as a studio, but I did get my shades in and we have these shades all in the other house too. These things are great. Now these are like a bamboo and they just pull down and they really look great. What a nice natural touch. And then you just lift them, boom, up they go. Uh, I'll try and find a link to these. I don't know if I can, but you custom order them when you order them they usually have them either 40% off or buy two, buy one, get one free. I'll try them, but these things are great. And they're not cheap, but they're not like $600 a window expensive, but I love these things, man. So anyways, if you hadn't seen the update, uh, I did get a refrigerator and a microwave in here. Pretty much everything's done, all the plumbing, got the chairs, got the bed, just a few little finishing touches to do in here. All right, so uh, just a quick update. This was this is my new drain field back in here and those lines had settled down. It was filling up with water and was putting back pressure on the septic. So I brought in truckloads of dirt. I stole dirt and I made this into a big hump. So I just want, someone was asking about an update on that. And then I put down ryegrass and I finally, because we finally got a couple warm days, I finally am starting to see some germination back here see that right there that's all that rye grass annual rye and it's all through there it's starting to germinate up but man that grass seed's been sitting there for what almost two weeks and it finally just started to germinate someone had a question about grubs so i figured i'd touch on that as well too it's actually probably a little bit early you want to actually treat for grubs when they're actually becoming active so that typically is around late March, early April. And on the product link on the page below, I always link to um, the double kill product that we use for grubs. There are two times to treat for grubs really, and that's in the spring and in the fall. So if you had grub problems last year and you're probably still experiencing them, go ahead and hit them for grubs because spring is a great time to treat for them. I think this thermostat has been here 30 years <laughs> I'm just leaving it I'm gonna walk over here real quick to the cabin because I just got a text from my um, electrician and he's gonna have a crew here on Thursday and we are getting ready to set up the solar system that I finally decided on now this ties into the new channel that I'm gonna do which is so many of you guys have asked about I don't want to call it prepping but for decades, I've always been prepared. I've always had plenty of food, supplies, everything, backup power, generators. And we're doing something, we're doing something special here on this property in that I want to be able to, my goal is, you know, can I close my gates and basically just survive out here for six months, a year? So I'll talk to you about the long-term storage uh, food program that we have. 
it's actually really reasonable if every single person should have 30 days every family should have 30 days worth of food stuck in a closet somewhere and it's really cheap to do i'll show you how we do it we actually go to sam's club you can go to walmart but we do this program done it for years um, we just keep it aside especially like at the beach house if you live at the beach and if you don't have a month worth of food supply and everything down there you're an idiot i mean because you're gonna have a hurricane so anyways uh make sure you're on the email list over on the website matter of fact i'll probably be able to put it on that page below there's a sign up form for the email list and i will send out an email when that new channel launches it should be kind of fun we'll do some weird different stuff over there but this sitting right here this is a 2224 cable that's a massive cable and that cable runs from here can you see that green line? It runs all the way over to the house. Now also my water line runs along with it. And so the solar system that I'm doing here is completely different than what you might think about a residential solar system. I can actually, it's portable, I can actually move it. I can, um, I can power basically my entire house with it. I don't have to put solar panels up. If I want to put them on the side, you're gonna, you're gonna want to see this, it's really cool. And it's probably about <laughs> it's probably about a tenth of the price that a solar company would charge you to come out and put solar on your house. My problem here, one of the problems I have here is my power company. My power company, you're a bunch of idiots. They restrict you to 10 kilowatts on your inverter if you tie into the grid. So basically you either have to live with almost very little uh, solar power or completely go off grid. It doesn't make sense. If I went with a full solar system on this property, my payback, my return on investment, hell, it would be like 30 years. I'm 60 years old. <laughs> Dude, I'm not doing that. Plus, it's still not enough power to power the whole house. Anyways, you're gonna wanna see that. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna walk up and show you the vegetable garden here. This is, um, I just wanna check on it, so I'll take you with me. Man, we got so much rain here. But these fields up here are just looking crazy green. So I have a security camera up here. That's a AI camera. I've done videos on it. It's on my channel. And it actually automatically tracks whatever's going by. <laughs> All night long, I have it kind of on mute. <laughs> All night long, I'm getting alerts. Animal detected. Animal detected. And that thing's videotaping deer going through these fields all night long. I mean, I guarantee it's 30 videos a night. This camera can detect person, animal, or vehicle. It'll tell you what it is. It's actually really cool. I know when UPS is coming, he uses my back gate, and it's like I get an alert on my watch <laughs> when I come downstairs and go. It's actually really cool, but man, these fields are just crazy. But I wanna look at this garden because probably next month, what is this, February, March? Yeah, probably in March, I'll probably start doing something up here, but our frost date is April 1st, and that's really when you can go ahead and start working on your garden. But I winterized this. We put some composted wood chips and dirt booster into these rows, covered them with wheat straw. And so now all I have to do is basically plant in here Last year, we took over 2,000 pounds of produce out of this garden. Matter of fact, we had so much, we were taking zucchini and squash up to the goat farm up the road. I mean, we took 300 pounds of that up to the goat. So I guess I've dragged you along long enough. Anyways, hit subscribe. Make sure you subscribe. That new channel, we'll do some fun stuff with it. It's not for everyone, I understand, but hey, maybe you'll like it. God.